Hi. In this episode, I am uh, doing a back story of the final or concluding days of the academic and cultural trip to Kyiv in Ukraine along with comrade through the Kropachev which began on the evening of 19th April and concluded on the 29th April again in the evening well we had visited several interesting uh, institutions in the ukraine state of ukraine in kiev especially first and foremost of all is the shevchenko university shevchenko state university kiev ukraine and this university is one of the those days one of the six universities in the state of ukraine and this is a hundred and then in 1986 a hundred and fifty year old university where geoscience or geology faculty was uh, inaugurated in 1946 and then uh, like i said earlier you know they admit something like uh, current at any academic year there will be at least uh, 1000 students doing various courses from uh, hydrogeology engineering geology petrophysics, uh, geological mapping, and ore deposits. And uh, they have a faculty of something like 40, and Mr. Dr. Furut, F-U-R-D-J, Furut, is our local host. And uh, one of the things, uh, you know, I had made uh, several, I mean, not, not I, we had uh, visited, the dean of the school of geology department geoscience department and uh, had discussions with uh, the, the faculty there and one of the things i wanted was a set of uh, slides of thin sections of the sedimentary rocks of the uh, that part of the soviet union and uh, the uh, the teacher or the faculty there uh, I don't exactly remember the name. He agreed that he will part with uh, something like 30 thin sections. I said it is for the, it will be very gratefully acknowledged and will be made use of by our students in the geology department in the University of Kerala. And in fact, uh, this was handed over to me on a third or fourth day, anyway. Then, one of the other thing that was uh, of a great attraction was the what is called the progress exhibition, which is actually a mirror of the uh, country that states uh, progress through years in the industrial, agricultural, academic, and applied research areas. And one of the things that, one of the models that attracted me, or attracted most people probably, was the, 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 the scaled down model of the a large uh, power station, nuclear power station, which is called, uh, which is Chernobyl power station, which is no more now, it is actually a fossil, because of an accident that occurred on the 26th April uh, 1986. Well, another interesting thing we went uh, around uh, to see in Kiev was what is called uh, the several churches these churches, at least six of them are there. And, uh, you know, it is uh, named after, uh, you know, I don't know, some, uh, some saint or whatever, or a king or a queen like that. And uh, we didn't go to all the churches. We went over to only one church uh, to see what is happening. Along with every church, there, you know, adjacent to, attached to, there will be a monastery. And uh, in there, there will be a lot of people, you know, both men and women, nearly aged people, most of them. And uh, they live, they make a living, I mean, they live uh, off the 
money that is uh, donated by the tourists as well as visitors uh, or the patrons of that church. Well, the most ex important thing about the church is what is called uh, the, the dome, the gilded dome, golden gilded dome, which will stand up uh, against the skyline of the town, which is at least uh, all these, uh, you know, what is called domes are uh, mm, semi-spherical and with a spire on top of it, but no red star anyway. And uh, uh, they will be uh, quite attractive. Obviously, it's all uh, gilded with a gold uh, leaf. That's the reason. And um, uh, roughly, you know, six or seven stories tall from the surroundings. And uh, another thing uh, that was uh, kind of unexpected was there were so many aged people, you know, lined up in the veranda or uh, of the of the church or around the church in the not in the sanctum sanctorum of the church but outside who expect uh, the visitors to help them financially and of course uh, you know i did i was about to pay a ruble but of course uh, it was through the said uh, no he already gave 16 kopecks fine so that ended there then another interesting thing is you know, we say for example, this is, you know, these, these uh, churches, etc. are in the uh, left bank of the Nipper River, in the old town. And of course, there are some uh, churches in the new town also. In the new town or on the right bank of the river. The river is, a, you know, the Nipper River is uh, emptying into or flowing into Black Sea. So on the right bank of the river, the two, you know, you, you, uh, topography wise there are some hills and uh, these hills are uh, mostly made of sedimentary rocks and uh, uh, a combination of sandstone and shale and uh, you know occasionally limestone and in this sandstone there are some uh, man-made caves in other words there is uh, what is called uh, some something like uh, you know it is not a burial ground it is uh, in one of those hills is a very famous tourist attraction also in the town of Kiel. What you have is a, you have a, you know, walk through tunnel uh, going into the mountain from the slope. And uh, there on either side, you have a gallery of uh, some, uh, what is called, I, I would use the word notches on either side. Each notch will be something like six foot long and uh, two foot tall and maybe two f foot uh, deep. And you have it on either side of the, on either walls rather. And of course now there is, a, those days when we went there, there was electric light, etc. And in each of those notches, there is a mummy. That is the point. And at least in one of the, you know, these uh, caves uh, we visited, the cave was cut into what is called in a, into a sandstone. And uh, these mummies were actually embalmed with uh, some kind of con con concoction that is very special to the Soviet Union or the, or the Russian or whatever, or this region, and that can uh, keep the body preserved for any number of years. And uh, of course, you know, once it is embalmed, then it is also another thing that they do probably is, it is uh, kept in these notches or in these spaces without contact with the natural, you know, ambient air. So I think that is also one of the reasons. Well, the, the, the Himalayan example, the super example of uh, the Soviet technology for uh, embalming a human body without any kind of distortion, 
is that of uh, that is what you see in the Lenin mausoleum in the Red Square. You see the dead body of uh, Vladimir Lenin, the founder of Soviet Union, in perfect shape, no wrinkles, no dewatering, no nothing, no change due to over the years. No, that is, you know, it is. Uh, embalmed in certain style and I think they do that periodically, I don't know, we don't know about the details unless we are, you know, they tell us. But anyway, similar to what I'm meaning to say is, embalming a dead body is nothing new as far as the Russian or Soviet science was concerned. Whatever we saw, yes, the mummies in uh, Kiev actually were a few hundred years old. That is the point. So then another interesting thing is there is what is called a, a furnicle. Furnicle is actually a winch, a winch with, which, in, in which you, there will be passenger cars. So you can go up or down from wherever <laughs> you are in that region to the uh, a road, a city road that is along the river shore or you can uh, go up the uh, in the passenger car of the winch pulled up by the winch over to the top of the hill somewhere in between was the what is called uh, this uh, cave uh, kind of thing where the mummies were in display well we saw that then another interesting thing, you know, was uh, that uh, we had uh, made a visit through me and uh, Varunch, along with Varunch, we went to the Ukraine Academy of Sciences. Ukraine Academy of Sciences also has a very important uh, um, research area in marine geology and marine sciences, and mostly marine geology because, you know, the Soviet Union has uh, had a large fleet of uh, naval vessels and these naval vessels are double as research vessels also. These things are unheard of in India in those days because, you know, <laughs> well, that is where we stood. We cannot, uh, uh, you know, find fault with the Soviet Union's policy or, uh, of course, we can, um, on looking back, we can always find fault with the Indian policy, Indian Navy's policy. Anyway, Indian Navy is, uh, vessels are, you know, not a huge one, but still they are meant only for the naval work exercises, training and so on. But uh, on the other hand, in Soviet system, the, as the sea science is, uh, <clears throat> is actually primarily moved by the naval fleet that the Soviet Union has. So then uh, we met, uh, there is a paleontology group, there is a, you know, shore process group or uh, a oceanography, physical oceanography group, etc. in the uh, Ukraine Academy of Sciences. That is also interesting. In India, we have a National Academy of Sciences, North of Indians, and the Indian Academy of Sciences, South of Indians. Whereas in the Soviet Union in those days, practically all the socialist republics in the Union had a, their own academy of sciences. Well, of course, uh, you know, the, the emphasis in science and uh, technology was uh, placed by Soviet Union is huge, as good as what the United States had, has been doing or had done in the past and in the future also. And of course, you know, in India, the story is very different. Uh, well, uh, you know, <laughs> we always considered the education or college education or a university education as a license for a job and not for doing any deep research uh, that will change uh, the and uh, change the lifestyle of the people or uh, uh, comforts of the nation or the GDP or uh, production or manufacturing of the station, nation. So that is the difference between the research goal of research in India and uh, the goal of research in uh, countries like Soviet Union or for that matter United States or Britain or European uh, nations or especially Germany. Anyway, so what, would, what happened? 
on the 29th, uh, you know, we did all these kind of wisdom sightseeing, etc., and Kif. And finally, on the in evening of 29th, we took a train from the Kif station to Moscow, which was around 8 o'clock, that uh, we got the train that was coming from Bukharst via uh, Kiev to Moscow. And uh, next day, that is on the 30th of April morning, uh, around 8 o'clock, the train pulled into the most Kivisky station. And uh, from there, you know, obviously we had a first thing, you know, 8 o'clock, we had needed a break for breakfast. So there is a stalo, yeah, we went and ate our breakfast there. And uh, then uh, through the, we took uh, one taxi, you know, in his taxi, he took me over to the ho ministry hotel. And then he went over to his home, promising that uh, we will meet on the next day for the May Day Parade. And of course, you know, May Day Parade was a big event in uh, Moscow, obviously. Uh, the May 2nd, I wanted to, I went over to the uh, Educational Attaches Office of the Indian Embassy in Moscow. In fact, uh, that uh, small, it is a home house actually, where there is an office probably in the uh, one portion of the building and uh, the remainder is uh, the living quarters of the educational attache. His name is one Mr. Chauhan. And uh, this gentleman came over to the, uh, you know, uh, Moscow air terminal. Then on the day when I arrived, I landed in uh, so Moscow to see me and uh, receive me. And of course, uh, you know, that was the other, otherwise I had seen him on occasions of uh, when I was, okay, yeah. Second time I saw him was uh, on the day before I was taking uh, a train to uh, Kiev. You know, obviously we are, there is a request by that office that uh, Indian students of Indian origin should report their movement within the nation, whether official or unofficial. So I wanted to go back and report to this gentleman that I was in, uh, come, I had come back from Kiev, etc., etc. So this office is not very far from uh, the uh, PFU or uh, Ordon Kids PFU complex. Only thing is, I had to take a rail, instead of a radial line, I had to take a uh, circular <laughs> metro. In other words, it is on the opposite side of the or uh, the So I went up uh, there because you know once uh, once I was guided by uh, my friend uh, Sasha who speaks in English speaks English very well and uh, was in the east in the PFA Open People Friendship University in the Geology Department. So second time I can go on my own because I had taken uh, you know very careful note about where to go, like, <laughs> take the train and where to get out of the train and how to walk up, etc. So that was not a problem. So I went up to the office and it was like uh, about uh, 9.30 in the morning. And uh, as soon as, uh, you know, he, this gentleman saw me, he walked out of his office, came to me and then received me and took me over to his office. And first thing he did was he offered me a cup of hot tea, the usual practice, and some and we say biscuits then. And then, then he was asking me, you know, what I was doing, etc., etc., et in Kiev. Finally, you know, he broke a bad news. The new bad news is that uh, the Chernobyl disaster is one of a kind of disaster in which hundreds of people perished. People who were working within the power station and also living in the neighborhood. And there is no uh, news in the local, uh, what, what is the local media? Three newspapers and television. There is no news coverage uh, in this uh, media. And uh, the Indian, uh, this his office, the education attaches office got this through the Indian embassy and which got in turn about the, the news about the you know, devastation by the Chernobyl explosion from other embassies of other nations in Moscow. 
So there is a custom that you know you, the embassies exchange such sensitive information about the <laughs> whichever country they are located in, very secret probably. And then he said, uh, Mr. Chauhan uh, wanted me to give it in writing what I saw in uh, Kiev on the 27th, 28th, and probably on 29th, part of the 29th of April. That is actually post-explosion days in the Chernobyl uh, power generating station. And uh, I gave a note in English, <laughs> I gave a note in writing stating that we were playing in what is called after the day of explosion in the Nipper Beach, River Nipper, River river Beach, kicking sand, etc., etc. And, uh, you know, it was signed my <laughs> statement and handed over to this man. From that point onwards, my I, my my energy, my uh, enthusiasm got deflated because this gentleman, uh, Mr. Chauhan said, you know, most people uh, in uh, Kiev would have been exposed to what is called uh, the radiation. And I was living in Kiev for at least uh, 72 hours po during the post-explosion disaster days. And uh, it just dulled me immensely. And I couldn't, you know, catch up my composure until I reached India. Well, I will come with another uh, story in the next episode.